The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman on this Monday, Monday the 20th of September. We're looking at the Dow coming back a little bit from the lows of the day. It's down 423 at uh, 24,000. Hey, this is going to be very interesting. Let me go there. I got the TLT up, but I want to show you the Dow. Look, the Dow at 34,172, down from 412. If there is a chapter, we have Roman candle uh, closed today. In other words, you've got a long wick, and the Dow closes above 34,250. It's 100 points up from here. Uh, and then tomorrow and Wednesday, it's Tuesday and Wednesday, closes nicely above today's high. Let's just imagine the high for the day so far, 34,459. Uh, that was also the open. And it closes above that uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. That would suggest that these moving averages of 34,687, 34,812 could be tested. But the most important thing about this is it's suggesting that the weekly chart is really close to giving a sell signal and perhaps even an immediate upgrade. And right now I can do this. I'm going to say there's a much greater chance that we've got a peak G in place in the weekly chart at 35,631. And I just want to extend this particular trend line right now. Let's just keep going up like that. Yeah, we've taken out this major trend line. What is this major trend line? That's the trend line that goes from not the low. You remember, for those of you who have taken my courses, you know that I don't like to draw trend lines off a low when there's a big spike off the low. Why? Because you could go up in a trend line and very quickly you're going to take out the resistance. Look, if I, I did this and here's the low of 18,230. Remember, that's the day that we went long uh, right here. This is uh, March the 23rd of 2020. Uh, we went long via the options and then we uh, continued holding the options up to fan with fantastic gains and we went to the diamonds and we still long those diamonds and not all of it but a, a, a good portion of it but we've gone short as well because on the shorter term you've got to take the play I couldn't I can't imagine how we're going to get back into that very long term position because we're not going back down to 18,213 not in this move not even to the 26,100 43 low of October, but it'll be somewhere maybe 32,200. Who knows? 30, who knows where we are? But uh, most importantly, we're trying to play this on the downside as well. So this trend line is useless. Even if I put it here, it's useless. So the trend line I like to take after a big move off a bottom is to go from a low that's pretty much either the next low that is made after the initial low, like the um, the week of the 27th of March at 18,213. And then I take that low and I draw in a trend line and I just leave it. It's like a, a long term moving average. Do you have to worry about it? No, until you get close to it. Well, we're not even close to it. All of a sudden, bam, within a couple of days, you hit that line and you've actually taken it out. And that's just not a good sign because it's suggesting with the MACD very weak, stochastic under 80% and 65% on balance volume starting to pull back. And the fact that the weekly chart is really close to seeing it, it isn't, hasn't yet. You can't anticipate. You've got to just say perhaps if the nine period moving average pulls back under the 14 period moving average, you're going to get a deeper correction. We're ready for a correction, the inner correction. Um, I would like to see it last a little bit longer. And I do want to, I'll, I'll go through some of the stocks in a moment. So most importantly, if we take out today's low today or tomorrow, that's going to suggest that the weekly chart is going to deteriorate as well, even if there's a really strong uh, rally towards the end of the week. But once you've done this, you've said, OK, now you've at least got a little fester there. You've got you've, you've, you've attacked what should have been support and, it's and taken it out. It weakens it a little bit. All right, let's go on to the S&P. S&P. At this point, it's coming back a little bit. It made a low today of 
43.56.29, trading at 43.66.85. 45.45.85 was a high on the 2nd of September. Now look at this. The Dow makes its high much earlier on. In fact, the Dow makes its high back in August, August the 16th at 35,631. Comes back down, makes the pattern we call the dreaded H, fails at a peak A or a B. Uh, we went uh, short. Uh, we were long, long, long. Then we decided to go short. And we went short at about 35,282. And uh, now we're trading at 34,088. August the 16th, February. February the 2nd, sorry, September, September the 2nd, September uh, is the high in the S&P on the 2nd. Look at the QQQ, which we are actually short. Uh, we're in short about a couple of, a few days after the all-time high of 382.78 on the 7th. See how you rotate at tops and at bottoms you get them, you remember March the 6th of 2009 on Friday where we went long. Back in 2009, we got the exact day of the low there as well. Um, and on the 9th, on Monday, was the S&P low. Well, here we are in the QQQ down 6.66 at 367.14. Uh, this is a big move, 382 down to 367. And that's a daily sell mode. A weekly hasn't even given a sell signal yet. Nine is way above the 14. Magni is just cross, cross negative, and the stochastic still good at 87%. So this is a little early on, but um, based on the Chapman methodology, Doji candle at LPD. Uh, look at that. Now, I just wanted to show you this for a second. Look, remember I did this on the NDX100, and I said, uh, yes. We were rallying, but I have to have alternate counts. Well, it made a doji high at 15,701 15, on the 7th, and has come down very sharply, just like the QQQ, obviously, because that's the trading vehicle. But look at the COMP index, C-O-M-P-X, that's how I get it. Um, that made a peak E. Now I can put the down arrow. And what's really important about this is that I was I was talking about the QQQ, the, the chat wave, uh, formation that I discussed uh, for a little while and I said there could be an alternate count and the, the alternate count took in a thing called the, what I call the Chapman Wave unconventional flat base restart where it does make a Chapman Wave instant restart at peak D within three bars it goes to a new recovery high this is within two bars and then you can have an alternate count well it ran up and then it ran and broke underneath peak D that started the new buy mode in which was 352.04 on the 19th of July so I say we're going to have an alternate count here because this could be a pink D or a, um, a brand new B and then I had the alternate count well it turns out we had a combination of tops we went to the peak D at 382.78 but that flat base restart worked beautifully right there <clears throat> Technique that I discussed in great detail. Just have something to drink. And while we're talking about the QQQ, coincidentally, we've got John in Philly. I didn't see that. Hi, John. How are you? Just before we go to the break, you wanted to look at? Got a question on those cues for you, Basil. I'll hold through the break. Wonderful. I'll be right back with John and Philly. We're looking at the QQQ, the Indian. NDX 100 Trading Vehicle Investment Group Trust Series. Dow's down 480, I think it is, 450. I'll be right back. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, 
Educating Investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back. Dow's down 532. S&P's down 72. And just real quickly before we go back to John, I just wanted to show you because I had a question about it. Uh, this is the two-minute chart of the E-mini. This is the uh, obviously the December one. Made a peak E in the Chapman wave, uh, the fifth highest peak, and now it's pulling back very sharply. All right, I'm going to go back to John. So, John, I've done a little bit on the QQQs already. So give me your question, please. Uh, yes, uh, I very specific. Before the question, I commend you on your work, Basil. Uh, several things, of course. One, uh, in buying lows of bear markets and, most importantly, hanging on to those uh, as a bull phase develops. Uh, of course, most uh, recent, well, most recently, the past 18 months, you're buying the down near the lows and hanging on to it. Second, I commend you... Uh, on taking on your analysis that triggers your action in shorting the Dow and the Qs, you know, uh, in the past three, four weeks. So, um, and, and of course, we all appreciate you sharing all that work with us. My Thank question, you, Basil, just on the Qs and the NDX and the, the composite, um, not about your trade position taken on a couple of weeks back, but as I look, Basil, at the monthly chart, weekly and daily, your Chapman Wave labeling, I'm asking you the question with the, with the uh, G C on the monthly, the E on the weekly, uh, does that argue uh, for, as you see it, a very major bull market top in place with a sizable bear market just getting underway? That's the question, sir. Actually, that, that, of course, is the question. It's the question that I've asked myself for quite some time, and I constantly do an analysis and then just shove it aside and say, no, none of the, none of the criteria, when, when we're talking about a major job, you're talking about, is it, is it one of those, uh, as we saw back in March of last year where the Dow dropped 39%, the S&P about 35%, is it one of those... And my answer is that there isn't, there still isn't really any other place to go when the Fed keeps rates this low. So let's just put that aside. But most importantly, when I, over the weekend, I had a chance 
to do an, a, a lot less charts because I just wanted to go through a couple of things. I wonder if I should do that now. Oh, let me just do that in a very, um, in a, a different way altogether. Let me just show you something here. This is the um, the black chart. If you're able to see it in the den, you should be able to see it. This black chart is the Dow with the only the nine period exponential moving average, a technique that I developed. This is the when it, it turns green as positive, when it turns pink as negative. Uh, this is the daily chart. Let's just skip that. Your question was on the QQQ, so let's go to the QQQ. I'd use this just as a benchmark. And you can see, as we're talking right now, for the very first time in quite a while, in fact, this is only, this is a daily chart. Let me, let me keep it as a daily chart and just tell you that as a daily chart from this pretty major low, let me go. I have to go back, unfortunately. All the way. Let's just go to April, April of the of April of 2020, and that's that March April low. But it was April when that nine period moving average turned green, and over the period there just been like a week or less than a week, or maybe even sometimes a two week pullback where it went pink. But mostly, look how long and consistent the green. Uh, nine of positive nine period moving average has been, and as we are speaking, it has just crossed to pink in the chart. But I have to wait for the end of the day before it'll show up. Uh, you can see this little S here that just tells you that it's uh, it's a sell signal. This has gone negative. It'll show up tomorrow here if the market continues as it is right now. But I didn't want to do that because I wanted to show you. Look. On the weekly chart, it is still major green. On the monthly chart, and for me, this is a key indicator. Look at this. From the low of 2009, this is actually October because it's a monthly chart. It took a little while to turn green. Look how vertical. It hasn't even changed color yet. So on a purely technical basis, the leadership is still the leadership. It's going at a very, this particular point on a daily basis, many of the, the key stocks are going through a pretty serious short term digestive phase. But if I look at the long term, I have to say to you, look, don't overestimate anything. You can't, you can't read into it if you're a technical analyst. You can't really read into it something that hasn't yet appeared. You can only speculate that if such and such occurs, that'll be negative. Well, how on earth would this green line in the monthly go negative? You'd have to get the QQQ, which is at 350. What is it at right now? I can barely see it. The three, uh, 366. Probably it would have to be around about 350. No, probably about 348 to 344 before this even can get to pink in the monthly chart. So that's all. And even then, look at it from, from where we've been in the 150, the 200 area. That's just a minor, minor consolidation. So I want to set that aside and just say none of my work right now on a monthly basis is suggesting that that area is going to be affected until the shorter term, which is the daily chart, really starts to take out um, the left side low. Well, let's go to the left side low. That means that this low right here of 360, no, 359.96, the low of the 19th of August, uh, we saw a little bit above that, seven points, but that's really the first area. If that gets taken out this week, that'll impact the weekly chart. Um, not the nine over the 14, but the weekly chart in the Chapman Wave methodology saying that is definitely a peak E. The MACD is going to be crossing. It has crossed negative, but this is not Friday. This is just Monday. And the stochastic is probably going to slip towards 80 percent or maybe under 80 percent. So you can see how you. I like to do things in a very step, step by step uh, motion. And all I can say is right now, this is a, a pretty serious Shorter term decline. We've got a waterfall cascade from Friday, from Friday's open in the QQQs to today, where we are at the low today. So going step by step, that's what I'm looking at. But if you're talking about a major market top, I don't see the um, 
areas like my IAI, which we've been long since the day after the low of last year in the 45s, which hit, this is the iShares broker dealer ETF, 111.17 on August the 30th. That's what I mean about rotating tops, peak E probably in the weekly chart. So I, I, I didn't see the speculation in the brokerage houses. I did see it as being the, the, the key stocks in that area, uh, like a Schwab, et cetera, being overbought. But I'm not seeing the public. I don't see headlines in the public every day saying new highs, public. You know, there's nothing like what we saw. We've seen at other tops, certainly not, not, not like the year 2000. So I don't see that here. I see this as a pretty serious shorter term consolidation. And it could last a little longer than normal. But I don't see the, the crash type scenario that we would normally expect. Does that answer your question really in the broader sense? I appreciate you taking the time to flush out all those thoughts. Yes, very helpful. Thanks again, Basil. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. So let me, let me go on with the analysis. So let me just put it as bluntly as I can. The tide has changed. The tide has changed the daily from sell signal to sell mode. The tide is changing in the weekly charts, but the weekly charts, you have to wait until Friday. I suspect that the weekly charts are going to go to sell signals with a probably almost an instant upgrade from sell signal to sell mode. That says you've probably got time as well as points. 
what do I really expect? The, the analysis I did over the weekend, what I showed my subscribers just very briefly, uh, I, I'll set this up and when it comes up, I will uh, talk about it. Let me just do this, mm -hmm. open recent. Uh, I want to go to the 1920s comparison. All right, while, while that's showing up, let me just go back to uh, the charts. I haven't finished the IWM. The I oh, it's already there. All right, there it is. So what I was saying is, you see, peak D in the Chapman Wave methodology, what we're always looking for is, <clears throat> if I can just get that right there, from the most identifiable low, low bar, we count each successively higher peak. They can go to eight high, sorry, seven higher highs. You get eighth higher high doesn't count. You never get an H. I alphabetize them A, B, C, D, E, F, G. At D, the fourth highest peak, other things can happen. Just make it as simple as that. And look what happened. That peak D back in February of 2020. Look at the smash to the downside. Now we've got another D. And you can see that big. There's no way in September that we're going to go to new all-time highs in the Dow. That's, that's my opinion. We've got how many days? Today's the 20th, so we've got four, we've got five trading days this week, and we've got about one, two, three, four, I think, next week. Yep, yeah, four next week. Thursday's the end of the month. I, I just don't see, I just see nothing unless there's a huge something happens, all right? The administration announces something that the market really thinks is fantastic. Infrastructure, how many times in five years have we heard the word infrastructure? So what I've used for a long time, and I never discussed it ever, I never told anyone what the left side chart was. I discussed this uh, for all the way from 2018 to about February or March, I think, of this year, where it was the first time, maybe it was later, where I said, you know what, folks, for subscribers, um, We've been using this as a template, this oval pattern here. I even put the question mark in. Here's the question mark. We've got the oval pattern. And then when we went to that peak D with the sharp sell-off, I said, now something different is happening. Are we going into this phase right now? And I said, I don't think so, because this phase is the one that took you to the September, the weekend, the Labor Day weekend, the 4th of 1929 at 386.10. And of course, we had a little bit of a pullback uh, from that level. 386, the initial one was down to 195, uh, the November the 15th low, then had a huge rally. Anybody who got out, of course, everybody got out on the uh, that October, the the smash of the, the uh, you know those those um, Thursday absolute devastating smashes. Actually, there were many of them. And anybody who wanted to get out got out. And then all of a sudden, the market goes from 185 or 195 to 297, up 100 points, up, uh, what is that, 35, 38% or something like it. Really, a fantastic move to the high of uh, April the 18th. Comes back, makes the dread H, doesn't this look like the Amazon chart? And then it comes down. And then what happens is it goes one to one to the downside, and eventually it stops. And it goes to the low of right there, July the 8th at 40.56, uh, the July the 8th of 1932. So um, I just don't see that now at all. I do see something quite seriously when you're making a monthly peak D, you got to be ready for so sometimes it's just one red candle, then you go sideways and you break out like you did back in 2017. I think this is a little different. You see the MACD is just turning down. Stochastic is 93% in the monthly chart of the Dow. Um, on balance volume is still very good. The, uh, uh, sorry, the nine period moving average is still very good. The on balance volume shows you that we're making a little V-shaped top there to peak D in the on balance volume. It says, be careful. <clears throat> so that says... All the way from, we're at 34,000 right now, 34,074, 32,000, you could go there. You can even go to 31. Actually, you can go all the way down to the 28, 29, 28,000 and not break the bullish pattern. But I'm just going one step at a time. We had so many charts that were up at the highs. I had so many charts that were making on balance volume highs that I said, in a monthly chart, and I said, you've got to expect some kind of a pullback. And that's where, and I think it's going to be very choppy. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the low that we saw in the Dow, let me just do this here, 
the low that we saw in the S and P with these two Doji candles in the two minute chart at forty. What was the low? Forty. 4340 round number low. I wouldn't be surprised if that is the low, at least for the moment, uh, maybe even for a day or two, and that we're going to be attempting rallies. Look, here we are on leg B in the two minute chart, just starting right now. So there is there are buyers out there, and there's a reason for the buyers. The buyers are there because there are a lot of stocks that actually have already had 15 to 20 percent pullbacks and are looking quite interesting for them, not for me, but maybe for them. So I'm just saying that I think it's going to be really choppy. It's going to be a difficult period. We are building up, uh, as I have done for a long time. I've got in a little section at the bottom of my uh, trader's corner, stocks on watch that we want to buy in the next big pullback. This is the pullback, and we'll be looking at those in great detail, what to buy. We did, fortunately, for once I followed through on everything I promised, and we did get some of the high flyers. Uh, and we even have one that uh, made an all-time high on Friday, and today it's up near the high. Um, it's just uncanny that it could do that. So, uh, yeah, we've been very selective. So this is the, uh, let me just do this quickly here. So I was speaking about the IWM, that's the Russell 2000. Look, you had all those daily chart. Look at the, all those Chapman Wave automated resistance levels. Look at those green. They should be red, but uh, unfortunately, the late, um, um, uh, my herb, herb that did my uh, all my notations, not my notations, my software programming passed away, and I just haven't been, had taken the time to change colors of different things. But the green actually turns out to be the resistance levels, and the cyan is the support. And look, yes, I look at this between 230s and 240s, unbelievable number of resistance points, not in the monthly, but in the daily and the weekly chart. Look at the SP, SPX.x. Chapman Wave automated resistance levels right there, five, four, five, three, zero oh, to four, five, six, zero, oh, four, five, eighty, one, and what was the high? What did it say? Forty five, forty five, something or other, right? And uh, now it's pulling back and it's broken support levels. That's going to be very interesting and very important to keep in mind. Look at the QQQ Chapman Wave automated levels. It actually was free to go higher because it broke the weekly, it broke the monthly, and then it was just thirty three eighty eight. And what was the high about three? I thought did I say it was 382 something or other. Three, let me just check out what I think that I, it's something like 382.78. Yeah. Uh, and so those are the, and now the support levels, you got they're a little bit lower down. So we're watching that closely. Now let me go back to the real charts. I want you to show you this. Um, Apple makes an all time high of 157.28 on the 7th of July, trading at 142. Big deal. It's given back a few weeks' worth of uh, action. No, it is a big deal. That's a peak E in the weekly chart. It is a possible leg F in the monthly. That's why I'm saying I want to take this seriously. Right I have we had no reason to buy it. We've liked up a ton. We had another stock taken out. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. The Regeneron. Uh, let's see, combination monoclonal antibody treatment looks interesting. Down not too much today. Yeah, it's only down five at five hundred at six hundred and forty-six. Made a peak E. It is in a, a, a daily cell mode, not just a cell signal, but a cell mode. R E G N. Uh, trading says down five at six forty-six, and it's a peak F. I've got this as a. It could be an instant restart, but I do. I'm calling it a peak F in the in the weekly. But only a leg B in the monthly. I looked at this the other day. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> it's got this really nice um, cup formation. It's almost like a rising cup and handle formation. Very. This is really an unusual pattern that you can see in monthly charts. <laughs> so unusual that I, I venture to say that I don't recall seeing one quite like this. Not for a, not for a big name stock. Uh, Maybe for uh, a small cap, yes. So, uh, yes, a COVID fighting menace has got a whole bunch of things going for it. So Regeneron is acting very well. So I'm, that's the reason why I'm saying this is very selective, but it's becoming less selective in the sense of what's moving to the upside, but broader as it's, we're coming down. And that's going to be, for me, the most important thing. And the other, you know, I talk about a dark cloud cover. So I did this. I, I didn't show it to my subscribers this week because I showed it last week. So no need to overemphasize it, but I'll just do this again. Remember, I've drawn this rectangle formation. Each time I've said, this is where I start to look at the news and what news aspect is really impacting the market. Well, if you look at, uh, if you look at the right here, the sideways movement, You'll see that in each case, we had a little bit of maybe what's the Fed going to do with the rates? It could be China. It really, a lot of it has to do with COVID. Even now, I think it's more COVID than, than rates or anything like that because it is putting a damper on a lot of activities that will impact uh, all the whole recreation area, the travel area, et cetera, hotels, the works. So this is the dark cloud cover, and what I wanted to say, in fact, I, I wanted to do this on Saturday. <clears throat> I did other things instead for my overview for my subscribers, my video. Um, and I think now, now I'm pretty certain I'll start to make some plans to see how I set up for my um, <clears throat> some kind of a, a webinar that I'm going to do. It'll be a video webinar. I'm not sure whether I should do it like I usually do it with one like uh, on 5 o'clock or whatever it is on a weekday night. Well, I just do it over the weekend. I do my usual overview, and then I do a special thing on Sunday. And it's just there for you to go through over and over. Why? Because I want to show you stocks that we're interested in buying, what we're doing. And I do this every time I do a webinar. And then that's what we try to enter into on the long side or short side, whatever it is. So I'm thinking about how to do it. Uh, I, I don't feel a rush because timing-wise, I think we're in for a little bit longer on, of the, on this pullback. 
It'll give us time. But in the meantime, you've got the dark news cloud cover. So we've got maybe two things that are really impacting. One is rates. What, what's the Fed going to do Wednesday? Well, what are they going to do? I don't know. Can, can, are they going to raise rates now with a market like this? They know usually they nervous nillies. Uh, or is it nervous nellies? Whatever it is. Um, we'll see. And the other thing, and the, and rates, I just think rates are stuck in a range. Why, well, yeah, why bother? It's just stuck in a range. That's all. Probably uh, for a little while to, longer to go. So it's also COVID. So th these are the things. There's so many others. There's China. China is a big thing as well. So it's how the market reacts to all this. And that's all that this dark news cloud cover is. There's always news. How does the market react and when does it? And that's when I draw in the rectangle. That's usually when we've gone short on the shorter term. And then we have to quickly flip because these things don't last all that long. This is the longest and the deepest. Look how long it's been. And look, it was narrow and bam, we've just almost got a one to one to the downside of the arch formation. So that would take you to maybe 33,800 uh, is the next key level of support. All right, with that said, we're out of that. I wanted to show you gold. Uh, you remember Monday, and Monday I like to spend a little time on everything we've got. In fact, I always do that, so I won't do that. Oh, okay, there we are. Now we're ready to go to um, gold. And gold is acting quite nicely. Now it's up 14, 17 point, 17.65. I think gold now has a chance to bounce a little bit. You know, in the marketplace, gold is your, your cover for fear especially if the XLF, which is the financials, are doing, look at that gap down. XLF at 36.47 was up at the 39 level, a recovery high just recently, peak D, Chapman Wave, fourth highest peak, peak D. And uh, that is actually an E in the weekly chart, slightly higher high, only a C in the monthly. <coughs> so you can see, and when, when um, the financial sector comes under pressure, Two things happen. Usually the market is also coming under pressure. Money tends to go to where? It goes towards the TLT, bonds. And that's helping bonds today. Look, nice move up. Dollar thirty-seven at 150.54 TLT. Lehman 20-year Treasury bond fund. And it's interesting. Think of it this way, that it's 20-year T-bonds up. It isn't just 20. In fact, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's the higher number, like 30. So we'll see. In the meantime, back to the ranch. The rates are just in a range, just like the TLT stack in a range. If at any point in the next week and a half, you see the bonds up at the 153 area, whew, that's going to be interesting. And then we have to look at it this way. We have to say, wait a minute, what's happening to the housing, Philadelphia housing market? Well, that's making the Chapman dreaded H pattern. What does that mean? This is the pattern we always look at here. <clears throat> Comes down, makes an H pattern. Does it take out the left side low? Or does it hold and all the implications? Well, we've seen one takeout on the left side right here, the arch formation. Uh, HGX is trading down 7.5 at 459. And yes, your second one, uh, but it is a green candle. So it's, even though it's down, it's, it's trying to come back off the low. But look here in the weekly chart, you've got an S, but it's the beginning of the week. The week hasn't even started really. It has to go to Friday before we can say that that S is really a sell signal um, in the weekly chart. Well, it's already in a sell mode, but that's an extra uh, added uh, impetus to the downside. So we haven't seen anything we can't talk about yet other than to say big consolidation going on. I'll draw it in right here or right there. So to put it together, what am I looking at? I'm looking at gold having a chance now to have an, a decent bounce. I don't know about the GDX. It should move a little bit higher. Look, GDX took out the left side 30.69 low of August. Hey, went to a peak D. Usually if you go all the way to a D, it says you can pull back, but you're probably going to hang out close to the left side low, maybe even hold it. Well, it didn't. It went under it twice, and now it's trying to get back 30.42. It's still underneath 30.69, but that says – that you could see some play now in the gold sector. Uh, that's the reason why I, ne I never write it off. I say it's in play. But unlike BTC, which I think has already done a huge move to the upside, is going to be pulling back a bit more. Bitcoin futures continuous contract. Maybe gold now takes its place and becomes in play just as a counter trend. I don't see a big move up, but I do see a chance 
that gold could stabilize. And some of the gold side, let's look at ASA, which is a uh, terrible. The lowercase h, arch formation, um, not looking good. ASA, gold and precious metals, gad stuff. I can see a balance, but at 19.30, I think 20.50 to 20.80 is a lot of resistance. I'll be back in a moment, the last segment coming up. Wow, we haven't even got to copper. Copper is down quite sharply today at 4.15. Now, all the metals end. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So we've got a limited time. I've got a, I'm going to rush through a whole bunch of things here. First of all, Hong Kong. Uh, this is HKDOW. That's not the exact index, but it's, it matches exactly the same as the Dow Jones Hong Kong index. A uh, sharp, sharp down move. This is in real trouble. Yes, I agree after those messages last night. Thank you. Baidu holding pretty well when you think it's made a peak D, but I think that you got to be careful. At 155, it could, uh, it must hold 150. It breaks 150, it's probably going to test the left side low back in the 130s. So, and if it does bounce now, it has to get to one. Uh, 155.67 has to get to 158.50 to 159.80, and it has to do that by Wednesday or Thursday. Otherwise, it's got a problem. SMHs, uh, SMHs I, has been a key index for us. 
Uh, we, unfortunately, we were short. Oh, we timed it just perfectly. And then they had a big spike on, on Thursday and took us out by one penny. We were short the three times uh, short uh, ETF, just a small, uh, we just started a position. And we haven't been able to get back in, unfortunately. But the timing was perfect. Everything was perfect. That's our clue. And if the SMH is 276 high, uh, goes down below two, so 264. I said under 269 is a problem. Well, 264 is a bigger problem. I suspect it's going to get into the 255s, and then we have to do another analysis. Uh, L A R U R. That's uh, Laurie wants to know. Oh, Laurie, uh, you wanted that. Is that how you found the symbol? L A U R. I am not sure the question. Let me just quickly go to the question. Hi, Bells, can you please take a look at uh, LAUR if you have a chance? I'm in at 1780. You're in at 1780. It's at 1716. Be careful because this has made a little peak right here with that gap and it's filling the gap. I love the chart, but on a short term basis, be prepared that this could go to 1650 to 1550. Uh, because it is, it's a little bit overextended, but come back to it. Look, you can always get back in. Or, or lighten up, at least lighten up, Rory, because this is, um, I like the chart. I'll do a little bit of work over, over the evening. And the other one is chart colors. I'll talk about that all tomorrow. I think we've done a lot today. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Stay tuned. Great programming. I'll be back tomorrow. Uh,